G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So in today's episode, I basically wanted to finish up where I left off in the last episode. So basically what I want to do is um, create some sort of power for these control towers. Now, I could simply just run these things off nuclear reactors, but I don't really want to use uranium to do that. Um, what I could do as well is I could actually just grab some solar panels and stick them on the side of these things, but that would kind of look ugly, so I don't really want to do that either. So, um, one solution I thought about was actually putting a wind turbine on the inside. Now, because it's on the inside, it's not really going to generate you know that much power but these towers actually don't consume that much power so even if it's only like you know a couple of watts or something like that then it should be more than enough to do what I want it to do so I think what I'll do first is I'll just grind out this block well, let's try and get inventory in here um, and of course my inventory, inventory is full. full um oh I didn't notice that block was there so this one is going to be relatively easy to place this kind of stuff in so I think what I'll do is I'm going to put a line of blocks that basically will, what we'll do is we'll make them the same color, even though it doesn't really matter because I can't really, you're not going to be able to see them anyway, but what we'll do is we'll just put in a cross piece of blocks here. Wait, let's get rid of this one. Um, let's place those blocks there. And then what I can do is I can just simply build a wind turbine here if it will let me. Yep, fantastic. So we can just do... Ah, uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Alright, let's place that there. And then we can just weld this up. And then that will go ahead and provide power to this whole thing. Now, let's just see exactly how much power I'm actually going to get out of this whole deal. Um, I'm trying to find a control panel here. Yeah, I know I should. <laughs> I, I am about to get the build and repair... Not the build and repair, but the basically the build info mod. But so far, I haven't been able to find the time to implement that. So current output, 23.26 kilowatts. That is extremely poor. But so, yeah, we have at least more input than we do output. So that should do just fine. It's not perfect and it's not really generating enough electricity but it is enough to keep this thing permanently powered and then the battery kind of acts as a bit of a bu buffer so what I'll do is I'll just quickly weld up all of these blocks um, I might have to grind that one out to get that one though so all right so that is everything welded up let's get rid of this one um, let's pick up these steel plates and then I will go ahead and replace the steel blocks that I ground out that were here. So make these the grey colour. I've got to weld this one up because I won't be able to get to it later. And then I'll just go ahead and place in the same blocks as what I did before. So that would be this one and this one here. Let's place those in. Weld those ones up. Now, this one over here is going to be slightly trickier than the other one on that side because if I... I'm just going to probably grind out this block here. But, um, can I scoot through there? Yeah, but obviously, as you can see, I have this big mountain in the way. So, what I'm going to have to do is drill all this stuff out. But I've got to be careful because I don't really want my drill marks to show through on the other side. So, I'm going to have to be careful with where I drill here. And try not to drill too far to the edge so that I kind of expose this on the outside. Um, but I think I should be able to manage this relatively easy. I don't know, we'll kind of have to see how we go with that. So I believe on the other side we went from this point here, so we would have to go like that. Um, and where is my midpoint here? So I'm guessing my midpoint would be like this block here. So. I'm probably just going to connect it on both these sides, have a bit of an L shape, but first we'll get rid of that, weld that one up, place that one there, and then from there we should be able to place in our uh, wind turbine, where is my wind turbine, here we go, 
So can I place it there? Actually, is that too tall? It is. So I'm going to have to drill down one extra block. So we're going to have to get rid of this stuff. Get rid of that. And I'm going to have to drill all this out. To basically go one full block further down. Now I think also what's going to happen is... I don't think where this block is it can kind of intersect with the voxels. Um, the wind turbine that is. So... We're going to have to place a block there and go all the way across to about, I think it's there. Yep, so we're going to have to go to that point. Uh, let's drill this out a little bit more. Um, possibly a bit more over here and maybe some over here. And I think I should be relatively safe to build this now. So let's see if I can build it. Uh, no, so looks like I've got some voxels to remove here and then also on this side here. Now, like I said, I don't want to drill this out too much because I don't want any of this stuff to be exposed on the outside. So yeah, it looks like I've got to get rid of this corner here. So for this, do I dare right click drill this? Yeah, we'll do that. Alright, that should be okay. Alright, let's see how we're going now. So, it's still kind of intersecting with stuff. Alright, so... Okay, so, after a bit of trial and error, I finally managed to get this thing placed down. So, if I go ahead and actually try and place it, now it will actually let me place it. Um, Funny thing is, I was able to remove quite a bit of this material and this thing wasn't even really working, but... Um, then when I went ahead and like did the local grid alignment and placed a whole bunch of blocks here, then all of a sudden it would let me build it. So I'm not sure what that's about, but hey, you know what? It works. So I'm kind of happy with that. Now, the one thing that I kind of hope with this whole thing is that it actually is putting out more power than I'm drawing on this grid. So let's go ahead and see if that is actually the case. So, all right. This is kind of what I was afraid of. This um, this wind turbine is not actually putting out enough power. So that is a bit of a concern. Now I haven't really... Yeah, I haven't really gone to the outer edges of this thing. So I, the thing with this one over here is that it's got all this free space around it. So it is actually generating enough wind energy. But because this thing here is kind of surrounded by voxel then it's really not going to work that well so what I may have to do here is try and remove as much material as possible but again I don't want to get too close to the edge and kind of ruin the aesthetic on the outside so hopefully just getting rid of a whole bunch of material around it down this way will kind of allow me to then make this thing work so let's go outside and just make sure that I haven't kind of ruined my transitions here Energy and I think critical. so far we're looking pretty good I just noticed I'm missing a block there so so far it's looking pretty good right let's see if that gained us any additional power um, go control panel battery current input 13.6 kilowatts you know it's not perfect it is generating more than what I need but I still think I could improve upon that a little bit so I might try and cheekily get rid of a little bit there maybe even potentially some here now I don't know how far I am there oh, do I risk it bugger it let's do it yep there we go um, and then maybe potentially we could remove some more from down here and let's see if this nets us any additional wind turbine power uh, cool so it's not pretty but I think we should still look quite good on the outside let's just check this out yeah nah so we have a nice transition still um, there's a little bit missing there I got a little bit close but you're not really gonna see it so I think that's looking pretty good right let's check to see how much power we are producing now so, ah, two kilowatts worth of power. So, <laughs> fully recharged in one hour and it's got the maximum stored power. Yeah, that's, that's quite 
Um, that's quite funny. But I don't think any of these turrets will actually draw any power. Um, they, they only really... Yeah, I don't think they'll draw much additional power. So I'll get rid of that block just to help things out a little bit. And that should kind of help. Um, and then all we need to do from here is just go ahead and place in our beam block. Um, which should be the cross-section beam block. I really wish there was a block that went on the inside of these things. So that I could kind of clean this up a little bit nicer. But um, yeah, so that should work out quite nicely. Although I reckon placing in that block would have reduced the power output. No, it's 16 kilowatts and we're drawing 10. So yeah, it's not perfect, but at least the power source for these towers is completely hidden and I don't have to completely hook it up to the rest of the base, which is something that I kind of wanted to avoid. And I don't have any ugly solar panels hanging off the side or some random wind turbine just kind of poking out the side of this thing. Now, there was another thing, problem that I kind of wanted to address. So, a couple of people in the comments of the last video said that, well, actually I think it was the video before the last video, um, the reason why these sim speed drops are occurring in this is because the rotor offset is set incorrectly and that the physics might actually be fighting each other. Um, or the physics of each rotor for this turret might be fighting each other. So let's check these rotors and just see um, what the offset of these are. So rotor displacement is negative 15.9. Um, I don't know if that's what it should be. So let's try negative... Uh, 0.16 is that right and let's see if the sim speed drops kind of sort themselves out hmm don't know so shift f11 so sim speed is stable at 1 and it seems to be Yeah, I think that did it. It looks pretty stable. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, I don't know exactly what the rotor offsets need to be. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't even know how to really sort that out. So, other people also suggested that it might be that the rotor is set um, too close to itself and that's the reason why it could be happening because it's like got a little bit of interference here but I'm not exactly sure what that offset should be so it'd be nice if you could set like a zero um, a zero force on the offset and just let it sort itself out but I don't think that's going to be the case all right well moving on there is another thing that I noticed that was happening um, specifically when we're doing the weapons testing. So you notice that this turret here was actually not working correctly and it was going in circles. So I think what the problem here is, and somebody also pointed this out in the comments, um, what this is basically doing is there is a front, the front turret controller is actually controlling the wrong um, guns or something like that. Um, let's have a look at this front gun rotor, front gun hinge, front gun camera, and well, you know what? Um, let's just build a control seat and then let's test controlling that turret manually and seeing what happens. So, what happens when I'll oh, turn this sim speed menu off? Uh, one more. All right, there we go. So I think maybe the sim speed is a little bit better, but I don't know. I really need to work on that some more. So. Somebody also linked in one of the um, one of the comments a a workshop link, and I think it's a weld workshop where you can basically check um, the proper offsets for connected rotors and things like that. So I think I'll load up that weld and then we'll have a look at that. All right, so let's have a look at our turret controller, front custom turret controller, and then let's go to control. All right, let's try and fire it. So. The turret works fine. 
Um. So I don't know why it wasn't working in my testing. Let's see if... Is it actually set to be enable AI is on and the aiming radius is set to 800 meters. Okay, cool. Well, that's checked out. So I don't know what's causing why that wasn't working before, but I think that should be all I need to do. So, okay. Let's exit this control seat. Let's get rid of that. And then let's move on to the next problem. So, um, quite a few episodes ago, you guys might have seen me um, messing around with what appeared to be an air leak in the hallway here. So, let's see if that is actually the same thing as what I was experiencing before. Or if the problem has kind of fixed itself. So, I'm pretty sure it was this floor here. Um, so basically the entire floor wasn't sealing um, But now it is Actually, you know what? I think it was the floor below this one that wasn't working properly So let's call the elevator and let's head on down to that. Oh, it looks like the elevator is here. Okay, fantastic uh, So let's go to the second floor and let's see if we cannot figure out where this air leak is coming from uh, This elevator is too slow Ah, there we go. Okay. So. Um. Now it says that it's sealed. Okay, very weird. So, the problem looks like it's solved. This room is sealed. Okay, that's fine. Um. Okay, what about if I open up this door? Yep, it's still sealed. Okay. So, maybe it was the room beneath this one. Maybe it was the first floor. So, let's go to the first floor and then see what it's like there. Alright, so, here we are on the first floor. Let's check this out. Ah, yes. This was the floor that was the problem. I was wondering which one it actually was. Okay, so, pretty sure if I close this door, then this room remains unsealed. Okay, so, I don't know what is causing the problem here because all these blocks are complete. I'm quite certain that we have every block under here complete, but just to be sure, I'm going to grind this away. I'm going to turn my lights on here and just make sure that every single block down here is fully welded up. And we don't have anything that's kind of damaged or anything like that. No, that looks all fine. All these blo blocks look good. Everything looks good. So, I'm going to go with the most obvious culprit here, and I'm going to assume that it's that door, but before I start messing around with that, let's go ahead and place in our catwalk once more. So, we'll put that back. And what I'm going to do is just weld a block here, and then that should seal up that door completely. And let's see if this room then becomes airtight. And no, it doesn't. Okay, this is absolutely bizarre. All these blocks are complete. There are no leaks here. This has got me absolutely stumped. Unless there is a block here missing or something. So... That is truly bizarre. I have no idea why this is happening. And then if I open this door... And then if I close this door... And this room is airtight. So everything here is airtight. It is just this room that is not airtight. So, hmm, what do I do to figure this out? I really can't see any block that's not welded up here. Everything is fully welded, so I really don't know what's causing the problem here. Alright, so I think honestly the only way I'm going to figure this out, or maybe it's a block that's missing from behind one of these ones. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. What I'm going to do though is I am going to download the build info mod um, and I'll be back in a second once I have because if I am not mistaken that actually has a tool that you can use to find where the leaks in a room are so alright guys I will see you in a moment alright guys welcome back so it turns out I didn't actually need to download the build info mod and use that trickery that it lets you take advantage of to find an air leak. I actually found out where it was. So, um, 
one of the m mistakes that I made here was, okay, let me kind of see if I can show you this. So you see these line of blocks under here, right? Well, they were not actually joined to anything. So if I go ahead and I grind away this interior wall down the bottom here, you can see that it's not joined to anything on this side, right? So let me just quickly place that block back. Um, if I can spin it around. Yep, that'll do. Perfect. Done. Alright, so what I found out was that this line of blocks here was not actually connected to anything. I mean, technically, um, like if you get a bunch of blocks like, let's say, in a U-shape, so um, just to give you an example, if I go like that, that, and that, now this structure here is technically airtight, but the problem is, is if this bottom piece here is a subgrid, um, because it's not actually connected to the rest of the grid, then these air vents can't really calculate the fact that it's, um, yeah, it's, it's actually sealing the space. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate what happens when I go ahead and actually get rid of that block. So let's get rid of this block. Um, I'll get rid of this one too. Um, and then I'll get rid of this block that's underneath this um, this conveyor junction here. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll place in this block, weld it up, and then we'll place in um, these two up here. Yes, I know that they're, they're in the wrong orientation, but this will kind of demonstrate my point. So it looks exactly the same as it did before, but now it's not airtight. And now, if I go ahead and I grind these blocks away and get rid of that one too, and then simply all I need to do is just go ahead and place in a block down there. If I can, let's use local grid alignment for this one. Um, wow. Wow, that was a massive lag. Okay, and this kind of highlights why I don't use that anymore. Local grid alignment in this game, well, not this game, but in this save, is just not working anymore. It is no bueno. So let's weld up these two blocks here. And like magic, the room is sealed. I knew there was something going on with this room, but it took me a little while to figure it out. But I was like, you know what? It has to be down here because everything here was connected perfectly fine and it had to be something under here. So after a little bit of grinding, then I finally figured out what it was. So, all right, let me place this thing back and then we can move on to the next problem. Right, so everything is now sorted out in this room. So now I want to kind of move on to the next problem. So you might have, yeah, kind of seen that this episode is majority me just going around fixing things that I've wanted to fix for a while because, yeah, they have kind of been building up. So there is one major change that I kind of want to make to this save. So I mentioned in my weapons testing that I wasn't really happy with the way that the uh, Reavers behave. And what I mean by that is... I'm quite okay with them attacking my base and all that sort of jazz, but all they want to seem to do is kind of ram your base. Um, so, yeah, I'd rather have a straight up fight with them rather than them trying to no. ram the... That's weird. Um, <laughs> ignore that fuel low. So, yeah, I would rather have a straight up fight with them as opposed to them kind of just crashing their ship into, you know, my landing decks or something like that. So... Somebody in the comments section actually mentioned that you can turn that feature off in the config files. Now, it took me a little while and a fair bit of googling, but I actually figured out exactly how to do it. So, what I'm going to do is jump on over to my computer side and we'll have a look at these config files and I will show you how to disable their ramming, ramming behavior. And then from there, we'll probably do a little bit of testing outside of this world. Um, we'll probably do it in space um, with the Atlas in a creative world because, you know, I don't want to sit here and have to wait for the Reavers to show up for like 10 hours. Um, and then, yeah, so... Ultimately, what this means I can do is start enabling all of my antennas and getting the Reavers to actually come and attack me 
um, and kind of spice things up a little bit. Um, so I don't really have to worry about them completely bombing my base and ramming because that honestly does 10 times more damage than any weapons really do. Even rail guns, um, artillery cannons, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, at least it will be more challenging, but not like impossibly challenging, if that makes sense. All right, guys, I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so here we are on in the C drive. So basically what you want to do is go to the C drive, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, workshop, content, this number, this number, I'm not going to say it because it's too long, data, encounters, and then common trigger. So obviously this is like the, the Reva mod itself. Um, so it doesn't actually have its name in the files. It's more got these numbers that uh, like the ID of the mod. So yeah, but it should be the same on your computer So all you need to do is go to this directory and then from there you go into data and then encounters um, And then we should have So I think it's common triggers or maybe it's behaviors. I can't really remember where I was at before uh, Where was it? Yeah, here we go. So encounters and then common triggers, right? So here you will find ramming and random ramming. So all you want to do is just open up these files and then where it has here use trigger, you just set that from true because initially this was true and all I've done is set that to false. And then what I've done is I've also set, set it up for random ramming and I've set that to false as well. So I haven't done anything else like disable their weapons. So I haven't restricted them from using rail guns or artillery cannons or anything like that. The only thing that I've done is stopped them from ramming because I felt like that was just a little bit overpowered. Um, and yeah, it's still going to be a challenge, I reckon. Um, but it's not going to be like, you know, if they ram a 5,000 block ship into your base, you know, they're not going to completely destroy it in one foul swoop. So, you know, and yeah. So anyway, let's go back into Space Engineers and let's test this out in a little, um, yeah, creative world. Okay, guys, well, here we are in a little test creative world. I know I'm not really in the wasteland and it's a bit of a different thing to the standard wasteland survival episode but i thought testing this kind of behavior in creative mode would be way easier than waiting for a reaver to come along in you know an episode or two time so yeah what i've done is i've parked the atlas and the anubis here i actually have a link in the video description of me building this ship if you are interested in seeing that but basically i've parked these two ships here to increase this uh, pcu so that then it then causes these reavers to spawn. So one interesting thing though is I haven't changed any other settings. But for some reason even though the antenna on the atlas are on. He still can't see me. So I guess I'm just going to have to wait until he kind of detects my ships. And then we'll see how we go from there. I guess what I could do though is I could actually move the ship around because they do kind of detect movement as well. So let's see if he detects the ships now. And you can see this ship is very slow. Ah, there we go. So he's detected us now. So then I'll move the ship back down. And you can see he's coming in really hot. And normally what they would do in this circumstance is just try and outright ram you. So I'm just going to leave the ship now and then let's just see what happens. Oh, big railgun hit from him. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he is actually slowing down and coming in for a bit of a strafing run. You can see that normally they would just kind of out, outright attack me, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. So, oh, look at all the guns on the Anubis go off and just obliterate this guy. Wow, that's unreal. <laughs> Jeepers. Yeah, I, I think I definitely put a, enough guns on this thing. Um, the whole purpose of this thing was to be a warship, so I definitely think I have succeeded in that front. I wonder if this thing actually sustained any damage. Anyway, you know what? I'm getting off topic. 
the whole idea of this little scenario was just to test and see if turning off those settings would actually cause him to ram me. So I guess to fully test it, what I could do is reload this world um, just after that guy spawns and then turn the behavior back on. Um, I'll do that off camera and I'll let you know what the results are. So anyway, guys, let's head on back to the wasteland. All right, guys, well, here we are back in the wasteland. So now that I've done the testing on the Reavers um, and disabling their ramming behavior, then I think it is high time that I actually enable the antennas on this base so that when they fly past they actually become attracted to my base so now like i said before i don't mind fighting them on a yeah just like on a weapons front but if they're trying to ram me then i don't really think that's very good now also while i was away what i went ahead and done was downloaded the build info mod um so whatever this yeah build vision so what I'm going to do here is we'll exit out of that one and then we'll go to the antenna dish and then we will toggle this block on. All right, so fantastic. Now, this mod is going to come in handy, especially when I go to do the next thing that I want to do. So there are a few things left that I want to do to this base. Um, in fact, I guess one thing I really need to do is I want to get some ammo into these um, towers, but I may actually do that. Please don't die. Oh. Yeah, I may actually do that off camera because, you know, filling those things with ammo is quite boring. Uh, I should really check my jetpack before I <laughs> press the record button in the future. I keep saying I'm going to do that, but I never actually end up doing it. All right, so let's refuel here. Okay, so got myself some fuel. Now, there is another thing that I wanted to do. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, now, I was thinking about putting some of these corner lights all the way to the front of this gun and having them kind of go in a flashing motion like that but the only problem here is that if i grab one of these corner lights you will see that and i don't know if it's always been like this or if this is a recent thing but they don't actually join together i could have sworn that they went end to end and they actually joined up with each other but it doesn't seem like that's the case so the only place i'm going to be able to place corner lights is there and i may be able to place just regular interior lights there but no i, I can't do that either so yeah that's um it was kind of a cool thing that i could have potentially implemented but because of the way that these blocks join together i can't actually do that now Another thing to do with this turret is um, I w did go away and test this a little bit in creative mode. And what I went ahead and done was actually disconnect, I think it was this dummy rotor. So I actually disconnected that rotor and it didn't really change anything in regards to sim speed. So I don't know if it is actually the physics of this rotor fighting this rotor that's causing my sim speed drops so you know what i'm done trying to figure it out and i'm just going to have to kind of live with it right so another thing that i wanted to do is i wanted to sort out these spotlights on the roof here because they just look like a massive eyesore and i absolutely hate them so i think what i'm going to do and I think I mentioned this before in a previous episode. I'm going to grab something like one of these ball turrets here. But instead of having guns, it's going to have spotlights. But I want it to be kind of relatively flush with this roof here. So I think what I will do is actually... Um, now, let me just get rid of these two blocks here. This hinge and this spotlight. And I guess... What I could do is I could just place it like here or something. So I could place a hinge. Where's my hinges? Uh, here we go. Yeah, so I could place a hinge there or I could place a hinge there. I don't really want there to be some random hinge kind of sticking out of the roof. That's going to look a little bit weird. Um, I could have one back here surrounded by a bunch of blocks. But again, that's going to look a bit weird because... I don't know, like, it just, yeah. I think these full blocks 
And if you look at it from this perspective, these full blocks, they just don't fit with this build. And that's why I was kind of struggling and gave up with these spotlights in the first place. So I think instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this block here and this one. And we'll just let these steel plates drop to the floor because I don't need to worry about them. And what I'm going to do is place my hinge here. So what we'll do is put the hinge there, except I'll make it this color to kind of fit with the theme. Um, we'll weld the base up, then we'll get rid of this, and then we will use the build vision to attach a small head. You know, I'm actually really happy that I've added this. No, actually, we can't do that. Ah, oh, darn it. I keep forgetting, because I have played around with this mod a little bit just to kind of familiarize myself with this mod. And I keep pressing escape to get out of the menu, and I've got to get out of that habit. Because that's the same key that you use to actually get out of the main menus in the game. So what we'll do is we'll place a rotor here. Then we'll get rid of that. And then we will attach a small head. And then right click to exit. Right, so let's build a line of blocks out to the hinge. Oh, whoops, okay. Well, let's get rid of this rotor then. Um, let's place in another one. Um, right, let's place our rotor again. Let's get rid of that. Now, let's turn the rotor lock on. Now it won't move. Now let's add a small head. And then right click to exit. Now when I attach a couple of blocks, it won't actually fall down on me. Ah, oh, fantastic. All right, cool. So let's place, I think I've got to place another one there. And then we'll just place a whole bunch of blocks out to this point here. So probably to about there. I think it's going to be a little bit tight because it's going to be, uh, let's go for a hinge part. As you can see, it's not perfectly aligned, but I still think we will be able to attach this. So let's go to the hinge and then we want to attach um, and again, I press escape instead of right clicking and there we go. So that's all done So now from here we can start building our Yeah, our spotlight so what I want to do here is I think if I build blocks off this it will stay where it is I don't think I need to worry about things moving around so Whereabouts do I want to so I think what we'll do is we'll go for blocks like this and maybe all the way back to here um, oh I didn't actually really want to put that block there let's get rid of that all right let's place a block here here and here and here and here all right let's weld all of these up okay fantastic so they're welded up and then we just got to place in our blocks here as well and our blocks here as well and then do I place in another line of blocks there? I'm pretty sure they will clear the rest of the hinge, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So we'll just weld these ones up too, because I have plenty of steel plates on me. So now we have one ugly looking little square, but yeah, it's a start. Now I think usually what I would do in this scenario is I would grab these blocks here like this, and we would just go ahead and place them there like that um, and again like that and then around here on the bottom we would spin them around and place them there but I'm probably going to put a spotlight there and a spotlight there just a small grid spotlight and then in the center here what we're going to do is place in a regular block like that um, and then obviously what we would do is just repeat the pattern all the way around so that it's all nice and um, yeah, it looks a little bit like a ball turret does. So, I'll probably finish up placing all of these blocks in, and then we can kind of look at it from that point onwards. Okay, so now all of the blocks are in place, and I think it's looking pretty good so far. Now, what I want to do is put in some small grid spotlights except I will probably make these the battered armor color. So let's just grab 
the color from here. Actually, yeah, that's right. I forgot to reconnect this. And I can use Build Vision to do this for me. Um, I'm actually really liking this Build Vision tool. So, what have we got? Switch lock. Yeah, fantastic. I'm actually really liking this mod. And I can see now why people were really intensely asking me to add this mod because it actually does save you a ton of time and especially when you're messing around with rotors and hinges and things like that it is going to save me a ton of time um, so now I will probably leave those blank and I will actually use a control panel somewhere to configure those because um, even though Build Vision is pretty good for doing all of the stuff with rotors and hinges and stuff like that, it's actually really slow to actually configure lights and things like that because you have so many different parameters to um, change. So I'll go 190, um, 215, and the intensity I'll set to 1.0, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, and then when I go ahead and weld up these lights, that should be what they are set to. So let's take a look at this and see what this is. So 190 and 215, and then 190 and 215, and intensity 1. Okay, cool. So I did configure the bright spotlights. Right, so it does look relatively ugly though. So since I'm, you know, I have a theme throughout the base of using these beam blocks, Maybe I can kind of dress this thing up a little bit by using a few beam blocks. So perhaps we can get rid of this block here and we can grab our beam blocks and I will place one here like this and maybe to save myself some time I'm going to grind away all of these blocks here in the center. So we'll get rid of all of those. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll grab some more beam blocks and I'll probably go for I'd say a 2 by one base beam block like this um, and then I will put the same block there and then the same block there also and then I will go back to my regular square beam block and then here we'll just put like a little corner beam block like one of these so we could do something like that. So let's weld these up and see how that looks. Yeah, um, it doesn't look too bad, but I think I could probably improve on this design a little bit. So perhaps, um, the one thing though I'm kind of concerned about is, oh no. <laughs> All right, let's, um, let's change the angle of this hinge. So velocity, Let's go negative zero. Let's change that. So I'll probably try and stop it at as close to zero as possible. Okay, I'll stop it there and let's see how we go with that. I mistakenly ground the base of the hinge and then it lost power and... Oh, I did it again! How? How? <laughs> oh. Alright, let's try this again. So let's go negative three and let's move it to about there. Wait, Energy I want to go to critical. about zero. All right, cool. So I'll exit that. Now hinge lock, I'll turn hinge lock on so it doesn't freaking move. Now let's see if I can grind this block out successfully this time. Okay, cool. So let's see if I can grind this one out successfully this time. Cool. Right, finally. <laughs> now, as I was trying to say before, um, after trying to fight the placement of these blocks, I'm not exactly sure what will happen if I grab one of these blocks here, place that there, and then place a square beam block down there like that, and then I will get there eventually. So then we'll place one of these down. And then one of these down. Oh, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Right, there. And finally there. So exactly the same as the top. Right, now I'm not going to weld these up because I want to see what happens when I rotate this down. So let's go and do that. So we'll do the velocity to be negative. Um, 
Oh, I can't do anything because the rotor lock is on. So let's turn that off. Now, let's move this that way and see if it still goes within the hinge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, okay. So I know that on the bottom at least, I can't get away with those blocks there. So I'm going to have to go with maybe half blocks. So let's exit out of here. And let's replace, I would say probably this block and this block so for these ones here maybe what I can do is just go for half beam blocks so maybe something like that and that and then finally that it's not exactly what I wanted but it will do it will do now the only thing I'm not happy with is these sides I don't think they kind of match up with this beam block thing in the middle and I think we can give this thing a little bit more shape so what I will do is I'm gonna get rid of these blocks once more I will try my level best not to grind the hinge itself again because I don't want to make that mistake so I'll just do one side for the moment and we'll see how this looks so I'm gonna grab this paint color and then I'm gonna place these blocks in and this should give us a really nice, really nice curve happening here. So obviously I can't do this on the bottom because, and I think what we need here is we need a two by one base and then we need a little corner tip. Um, I can't do this on the bottom because obviously, oh yeah, that looks 10 times better. I am really happy with that. So how much better does this side look as opposed to that side? I think that looks fantastic. Now, as I said, I probably can't do that with the bottom here. So I think we're going to have to get a little bit creative with this bottom section here. Come on, grind the block out, please. And maybe we'll do this block. No energy. Oh, I can't do that block. It would have to be that block, then that block and then let's get rid of this ah all right i'll get some energy okay got myself some energy so now we can continue with this ah, i did it again and mm, i am actually getting quite frustrated with that that is really really annoying me all right so let's move this back up well, I guess at least I know that the road is not going to get locked there. Um, right, let's uh, stop it about there. Okay. Let's stop that. Let's exit. Let's turn the rotor lock back on so that when I do accidentally grind this again. Now, please, game. Grind that block. Thank you. Oh, this is so frustrating. All right. So, as I was saying... Then we can go ahead and we can place that block there. Let's weld these up and then see how that looks. So it does look relatively flat on the bottom, but there isn't really too much I can do about that. So all I need to do now is kind of replicate the same design on the other side, and then we should be good to go. Um, so also what I want to do is kind of clean up this area a bit. Um, having it look like that doesn't exactly look very glamorous either. And I was thinking maybe we could put some sort of a um, structure similar to what I've got on this control tower here, like something like this, where it kind of just goes all the way back um, and we got like a little bit of detail added to the roof of this um, this hangar. So what I'll do is I'll complete this other side and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, well, as you can see, I've kind of completed this... Um, ball turret spotlight I don't really know what to call it so I will angle this thing down a little bit so in fact let's set the RPM to oh I need to turn off the rotor lock let's do that and it's at negative 4.86 degrees so I might set the lower limit to negative zero uh, or negative one so 
But if I'm looking... Oh, no, it didn't save it. So if I'm looking at this, um, this hinge, then the lower limit is going that way because that's where this point is. Uh, so let's try that again. So the lower limit, I want to set this to negative or about zero. So we'll set that to zero. Cool. So we'll set that and then let's play with the velocity and get this thing to point down. Now I'm not exactly sure where I want it to point down. I'm going to say maybe about there. So what's that? That's like 40 degrees. Okay. So let's set that there. And I guess I'm going to have to wait until night time to see what that looks like. So now what I want to do is um, kind of add a little bit of structure to this roof. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to get rid of these solar panels. But it doesn't really matter too much. Because at the end of the day, I have that many wind turbines and nuclear reactors around the base that I don't really need to worry about getting rid of these solar panels. So, um, will that be enough? No, I'll get rid of this one too. And then we can build this structure. Now, do they have any steel plates? 12. Not really enough to do anything meaningful with. So, let's go ahead and actually withdraw a whole bunch of steel plates. And then we should be able to get this structure done. Now, I'm probably going to get rid of these blocks here. Um, and then just replace them with regular square blocks. So, we'll go like that. And I probably shouldn't have loaded up with so many steel plates so that I could actually get rid of them all. But we'll get rid of these two blocks without having to weld extra stuff up. Now, how do I go about doing this? Um, I guess what I could do is I could do something like this. So I could make it exactly the same as what I've made all the other structures. Um, so just like one block all the way along here that goes along the roof like that and then in the middle we can go ahead and just place in our um, our beam blocks so beam block like this so just grab a half block if I can ever find it and place it in like that in fact I may change this just to a regular half block and then hmm I don't know. It kind of... Maybe instead I can get rid of this block here. And then this one. And then I can place in a block like this. So we can grab that block. And then that block. And then here I can place in another block like one of these. I... I could technically go ahead and place in um, one of these blocks here like this so it kind of does match up but as you can see it's getting quite close to the spotlights and I don't think that's going to be a good idea because it's going to get in the way of them and then like restrict the amount of light that's coming out of them so I'll have to use like a half block here so we'll do something like that and yeah it doesn't really match up from this side but that's fine it doesn't really matter um, yeah, I think that actually looks pretty good. Right, got myself some fuel. So, I don't know if I'm really happy with this. I think that another thing I could do is I could actually... What's all those things? I need to turn off those signals. Um, I could actually do something like this instead. So, we could place one of these blocks here and we could widen this a little bit and maybe go for something just a little bit different. Um, because this roof is so wide, maybe it might be a good idea to make these little ribbing effects a little bit wider as well. But I guess what I may do is I may actually set up one side like this, so where it's extra wide. And then when I go to do the spotlight on that side, I will do one like I had originally done there, which is just the three blocks wide. And then we'll just kind of see how each one looks compared to the other. And then we can kind of go from there. So let's get rid of these blocks here. And then finally these blocks. 
And then we can put in just our regular half blocks. And that is all the half blocks placed. And then what we can do is go ahead and place in our beam blocks, which will need to be this color here, if I can grab it. Shift P. There we go. And then we'll just place in our beam blocks there like that. And then it just kind of gives the roof a little bit more shape. Um, like I said, I'm going to have to get rid of these, a lot of these solar panels, but I, I don't, I didn't never, they were kind of a temporary thing anyway, so maybe it's kind of a good thing that I'm getting rid of them now. So, right, all I need to do is weld these up. Okay, fantastic. So that is all of those blocks welded up. And yeah, I think that actually looks pretty good, especially once I get the other side done. Um, I think it would look a lot better than what it currently does at the moment. Um, I could even, what I could even do is get rid of uh, perhaps this block here. Um, try not to grind away my hinge again because that's kind of, seems to be the theme of this episode for whatever reason. Um, and we could do something like that. Um, except for the fact that it doesn't really look right because this block here is kind of not terminated by anything. So maybe I could do something a little bit further and we could do something like this maybe. And um, actually maybe I could even leave in this color too. I was thinking about using the, the other texture here but... Hmm. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, now the other thing I could do here is potentially... Can I place a block? I think I could actually get away with placing something in the front there. But I also think if I place a block here, it's also going to get in the way of those spotlights. Because if, I, if it will let me place a block there... Yeah, you can kind of see that from this angle here... The spotlights are completely blocked so I would need to add in like maybe a half block or something so maybe you know the same as what is directly above it like one of those blocks but I don't know if that's something that I want to really do either so I don't know I'll leave it like that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and complete this one on this side um, and then hopefully by that time it's kind of night time and then we can kind of configure where these lights are. Actually, that's pretty much where I want it to be. So anyway, I'll be back in a moment and then we'll get this side completed. All right. Well, I was kind of minding my own business getting this second ball spotlight turret thingamajig going. And it seems like a Riz Reaver has uh, decided to pay us a visit. So while he's incoming though, I'm going to change these spotlights because by the looks of it it's gonna take him a little while to get here so 190 215 and 1.0 all right so let's wait and see what happens as he kind of comes in in fact I do I have a control chair anywhere where I can kind of sit I might sit here in this control seat and then let's press V Let's see what happens. So I just want to get myself a little bit of power, actually. Ooh. Crafty little bugger. He's pretty quick. Uh, not quick enough, though. Ooh. Did he drop any uranium? That'd be nice. Uh, before I check that out, though, how much damage did he actually do to this thing? Hmm, a little bit. And as you can see, none of these turrets actually fired because I didn't have any ammunition in them. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer, but um, not much what I can really do about that. So, I've got a large ion thruster here, a little bit of ice, uh, some steel plate, some steel scrap. Some more scrap, more scrap, more scrap, more scrap. Yeah, I think those particular guys don't actually have uh, small reactors or anything 
really that valuable on them, so a <laughs> little graphical glitch there, always good. Um, I'll take the ice, thanks mate. Inventory full. Okay, well, I guess I'll take that much then. Yeah, so, a little bit of action. I would like more, but, yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, when I was in my creative world doing that weapons testing just before I started this portion of the recording, I actually noticed that the amount of reaver spawns that there were compared to before was actually quite a lot less. So, yeah, I'm not sure if there is a setting that I need to change in the game or if it's kind of like reset. Because as far as I'm aware, the size and frequency of reaver attacks depends on the PCU of your total grids. And, um, I, I think I'm up there. <laughs> I would hate to think of what the total PCU of this entire contraption is, but I would imagine it's somewhere in like 200,000 range. So, yeah, I thought I would have enough PCU to attract the big boys, but obviously not. Anyway, I'm going to get back to finishing this up and, yeah, we'll see how it looks. Okay, well, I have gone ahead and I've completed the light on the other side now, so I think um, it's looking pretty good. So as you can see, I'll turn my character's lights off here so you can kind of see. So that area is relatively well lit up. It's probably not as well as I would like, but I think in addition to these lights here, I'm going to put in some of these ones here, but I'm going to place them like maybe two here and maybe one on the side here on either side just so that I can light up this area here as well so yeah there is that um, now as you can see on this side I've gone with just the three blocks and on this side I've gone with the design that I went for before and you can see I've got like this little kind of hat I would say over, over these ball turret lights um, and then over this side I thought I would do something different and I put um, just some of these armor panels um, so up the top here I've colored them obviously the battered armor and then here we've got like the sandy texture and I'm pretty sure we should be okay um, at least where the the ball turret lights are at the moment as long as I don't move them they should be fine um, but yeah, something else happened while I was away. Um, so I'll get some fuel and then I'll kind of show you what happened while I was away. Right, so pretty much immediately after I got ta attacked by that Reaver Invader, um, which is just literally a small grid fighter over in about this area here, and he got taken down by my turrets. Although, to be honest, he actually managed to evade my turrets for quite some time which was pretty scary so anyway I had another one coming at me from this angle here and I thought that he would be in line for these turrets along here and he did get fired upon unfortunately though he didn't get taken out quick enough and then this happened so I am not sure how on earth this happened <laughs> But this thing just got absolutely destroyed. I mean, look at it. Look at the destruction. It's insane. So, I'm really going to have to reevaluate whether or not I'm using light armor here. And I don't know if he had a railgun turret or what. Um, and I, th at first I thought maybe there was a magazine explosion. Meaning that my ammunition exploded. But as you can see, the cargo container is fully intact. And that's not really the cause of the issue. So, I don't really know what I'm going to do to fix this. Um, I think the fastest way is just going to be to grind all that down and then just re-weld everything up from scratch. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm really going to have to reevaluate whether or not I build these things out of heavy armor. And if I do, if I do want to upgrade them to heavy armor, then that's going to take me a long time. So, but anyway, that's going to have to be for next episode because I've kind of run out of time for this episode. Um, so anyway, guys, really hope you enjoyed the episode of Wasteland Survival. A little bit different with the, um testing in space and everything like that but yeah i hope you enjoyed it anyway and i hope to see you in the next episode of wasteland survival all right guys i will see you next time